Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Heitler, a clinical psychologist in Denver. I'm delighted today that my next door neighbor, <laughs> Marilyn Atler, is here with me. Uh, Marilyn Atler also goes by Marilyn Vanderbur. Um, it's particularly exciting for me because both of us read, book, write, read books and write books. Uh, Marilyn's book, Miss America by Day, is what brought attention really throughout the world to incest and the havoc it wreaks on children's and families' lives. So America by Day is her book. I write about emotions and about marriage. So I write prescriptions without pills for relief from depression, anger, anxiety, and more. Okay, so today let's talk about forgiveness because bad things often happen, hopefully not often, but happen in many people's lives. One of the worst can be incest. So incest survivors really need to understand this business of forgiveness. I've spoken in over 500 cities, and the most combustible word I have ever said, other than perhaps incest, is forgiveness. Hmm. What makes it so There's sensitive? so much judgment about it. Judgment. Um, judgment. Self-judgment, um, self-criticism? No, from others. So uh -huh. during a question and answer period, a question that will always be asked is, did you forgive your father? And I know the drill. Uh -huh. All I have to do is say yes, and they applaud. <laughs> <Uh -huh. laughs> and if I say not so much, then there is some silence and much giving of biblical quotes. Well, I have, I have a quote from the Bible. If uh, your brother um, betrays you, uh -huh. rebuke him. If he uh, repents, forgive. So what does, re uh, what does repent mean? My, um, a survivor well, that hold I, on just a minute. I really don't like that quote <laughs> because <laughs> then you have no control. It's all up to whether he understands and is sorry for what he did. Uh, I, I, you, you can't control whether you forgive or don't forgive by that saying. Am I right about that or no? I wish you had written the Bible. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. In my next life. So a survivor that I had emailed with over time asked me if I would um, go talk to her perpetrator. She was raped when she was 12 by a 17-year-old. And hmm. now she's in her late 30s. He's in his early 40s. And, and they I, still know each other. Uh, yes. They are, yeah. yes, they're relatives. Um, and he said, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Well, um, if I was, uh, you know, if I was drinking, if, if I was drunk, you know, then uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. not repentance. I spoke in Fort Collins, Colorado, and afterwards people line up to talk to me. So the line was there, but I was aware of a man behind me, oh. who was just getting ready to burst oh. open. So I said, give me a minute. I took him around the corner, and he just burst into sobs. And he said, I'm the brother, I'm the brother. I had talked about the fact that 14-year-olds comprise the largest number of sex offenders of any age group. 14-year-olds? 14-year-olds. Boys, you're saying? Boys, but girls. Girls because violate I as well, know but boys. Because boys can be violated as well, for sure. A absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know whether he had repress the fact that he had been inappropriate with a younger child, um, or, there, or whether he had just understood the significance of what that was, but he was sobbing from the depth of his being. And I put my arms around him and I said, you need to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And he pulled back and I said, you need to have a conversation. And he said, I need to have a conversation. Ooh. And I believe that night or the next day, he sat down with what might have been a younger sister and said from the depths of his being, I am so sorry. Forgiveness in a heartbeat. Right. Forgive my father. Hmm. He raped me for 13 years. Wow. And after he died, when I was 56, I learned that he never stopped. To his oh, death. Never to stopped. Violating. He violated other people. To his death. You. To his death. Oh, wow. And was he ever able to apologize or empathize at all with your experience? I confronted him when I was 40. 
Mm -hmm. Um, When he knew why I had come, he said, I'll be back in a minute. I knew he had a gun. I knew he went up to get a gun. I knew he had a gun in his pocket, which he did. I knew it. And it kind of flashed through my mind, but I thought, you know, I'm dying, I'm dying a day at a time here, so let's just do this. Mm-hmm. Um, my anger had not come up yet. Um, he said, if I had known what it would do to you, I never would have done it. He did say that. But he never stopped. <laughs> with other people. Well, y- yes, with you I was, well. Well, no, I was, you were 40. I was, yeah, I was 40. Right. Um, and then after our conversation, he pulled out the gun. And he said, if you had come in any other way, I would have killed myself. Huh. And the message was, <laughs> yeah. take a good look at this before you, you think you're going to talk about this. It was a real threat. Huh. It was not done lovingly. Uh, I see. So either he could pretend there was nothing wrong or he could shoot himself. But that in-between world where you acknowledge, I made the terrible mistake and really feel it deeply, that was not within his repertoire. No, but he did, He first of all, I went alone. Mm-hmm. If there had been anyone with me, he would have denied it. I went alone. Yeah. Um, and I did not go in anger. Well, so that's the other person being able to acknowledge their mistake. And that certainly makes forgiveness, this symmetrical part, Absolutely. easier. So what if you have someone who isn't able to talk about it, or for whatever reason you're not willing to talk about it with them? I have my own theories on forgiveness there. I'd love to know. Well, I think that notion, do I forgive you? What does that mean? Exactly. (laughs) What does that mean? So, thank you. (laughs) For me, um, it means that the resentment or anger or distrust or dislike that I've harbored has evaporated. So it's not for me when I've experienced it in my own life Forgiveness is not something that you make as a decision from your conscious brain. Forgiveness is something that happens when you begin to see the other person in a totally different light. So if I was very angry at somebody for some trait that they had, they had betrayed me in some way or they had treated someone that I loved very badly, If I begin to look at where did that come from in that person, what was going on, and then I see, oh, he suffered all his life. He's tried so hard, and yet he he keeps failing, or he can't do it, and he gets so upset. And that's why he does these things to these other people that I love. Oh, something melts inside of me, that hardness, that hard edge of anger melts and that to me is forgiveness I, I see him with empathy and compassion now rather than it's do I hate my father I don't do I have anger at my father I really worked through that mm-hmm. do I forgive him for what that word means to me and forgive would I'm thinking means something like have compassion on him he pried me open mm-hmm. for 13 years. If he had come home drunk one night, if, if it had been an inappropriate situation, mm-hmm. but from age 5 to age 18, knowing, he knew, mm-hmm. he, he was an educated man, any, mm-hmm. any man knows, um, and then to, to learn that he never stopped, even though, even though he understood what it had done to uh-huh. me. That makes so it more difficult. I think difficult. that's the key. Maybe it's inappropriate to forgive somebody who still perpetrates. You're saying I, think I, I should the, forgive someone who still perpetrates? The opposite. The opposite. Right. And I'm when I'm thinking in my own life, when that weight of anger or resentment or dislike toward someone who'd done some bad things lifted, it was in part because I saw him in a new way, and in part because he'd grown older and mellowed, was himself maturing and growing beyond it. He, he wasn't still doing the, okay. the bad behavior. I'm, I, was not, I do not carry those heavy weights. Uh-huh. I am neutral on my father. Mm-hmm. I don't have, I just, I don't have any more feeling about him. So and it's not maybe, as if I'm carrying anger. Right, and maybe that's a form 
of forgiveness. I no longer have ill feelings toward you, and I still think what you did was absolutely terrible, and the fact that you still do it is absolutely terrible. So, so much for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Marilyn, for Thank joining you, me today. Thank you. Yeah.